Welcome everyone to True Hill Heat 22. This is one of our favorite segments, Heated Opinions. This is when your host, SP3, and the top guy, JJ, we give our most unpopular opinions for you, the viewing audience. So for this time, True Hill Heat 22 Heated Opinions, I'm going to let my colleague, top guy, JJ, start us off. <laughs> it's actually kind of good to be back around here, around these here pods, around these here. I hope you're enjoying your holidays and, you know, you got all your Christmas gifts and I hope you got all the crap that you wanted. No, you probably didn't get shit you wanted anyway. But I'm going to go with another thing that you didn't want was to hear some truth. And my truth is Seth Rollins is incapable of carrying any brand on television at all, at all. Yo. And I don't care what anyone tells me, Monday Night Rollins, MNFR, whatever the hell you want to call them, t-shirts. He has been given the golden ticket to be able to do open challenges, to have his best rivalry on television, supposedly. All right, I'm not going to blame everything on him because Dean Ambrose has been like the disappointment of 2018, in my opinion. 2018 like Dean Ambrose is straight doodoo trash at this point he's but I don't feel this was Seth Rollins' chance to lift up that trash on an elevated pay-per-view like TLC and that match just God was awful it was awful when did during a Seth Rollins match have y'all ever heard a crowd chant this is boring this is boring and I second that shit watching that match live. I'm like, yo, they nailed that shit on the head. That match couldn't be picked up. That match couldn't get livelier. He tried his super kicks, his little leg super kicks, and his falcon arrows, and none of that shit pulled off. He tried to hype up the crowd. He tried his little burn it down. I burn it down. Shit ain't work either. I won't say you're wrong. But I feel like the TLC match didn't get over because of the booking and the placement of the matchup. I feel like that match would have been a lot better, one, if they actually fought and wrestled like they hated each other. Like, if they actually fought and wrestled like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens That's... do, it would have went a long way, one. And number two, the Mixed Match Challenge Finals, if you switch that and make Seth and Dean the first match of the night, it, 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 no one chance this is boring. Dance break! <laughs> I was like, why is that on the main show and the Cruiserweights is on the pre-show? I did not understand yeah. that at all, but I feel like Seth and Dean, they were, they were damaged by the fact that they were in the middle of the two best matches, not only of, of TLC, they were, they were in between two of the best matches of the entire year in AJ versus uh, Br Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship and the TLC women's match with Asuka, Becky, and Charlotte. That's what you call supposedly, supposedly getting a triple main event. Because how often do that match pre-main event usually steals the thunder Never. and steals the energy? Never. It usually name, name one instance in the last two years. You, for, Are we talking about WWE? Why I'm talking about WWE. WWE. Because for the past for the past ten to twelve years, WWE has been teaching us that the match before the, pay, before the before the main event is the match we're supposed to sleep on. It's the match that's supposed to bring us down before we come back up for the main oh, event. And I'll every see, time, I'll sleep on any WWE main events. I don't sleep on WWE main events. I usually sleep on the matches under it. I usually go exactly. to sleep to my to my my Ronda tag matches, or I usually go to sleep to we my. We never eight, sleep when our Lord and Savior is on the screen, and don't you speak that blasphemy in front of that me? That is my point. Is that Ronda is the match that I'm usually talking about? You dipshit. That's the match I go to sleep to. I don't go to sleep to the main event because the main events are usually freaking horrible. Main events been good this year. Mm -hmm. Except for well, mm -hmm. Joe and yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah, Any yeah, anytime yeah. Roman was there, I guess mm -hmm. I guess uh, people had a problem with it. But yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, you know, main event and grudge matches. Yeah, of course you would have a problem with it too. But yeah, I didn't have a problem with of course with, Joe, with, with uh, yeah. Joe versus Roman in the main event. Yeah, but that's not my heated opinion. <laughs> my heated opinion for True Hill Heat twenty two and Happy Holidays. You see me. Uh so my, I'm going to crush a couple of you guys' dreams because I know you're having a great holiday season. You're having a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. You're going into 2019, and you're thinking, who is the hottest act in the WWE? And a lot of you are going to say Becky Lynch. 
Now, Becky Lynch is a woman that at the end of 2017, I stood up here on True Hill Heat and I said she was the most underrated performer in all of the WWE in 2017. At the end of 2018, I had to observe and do an analysis of her entire career because she is the hottest thing in the company right now. Everybody is saying, Becky, she's great. She's got selling merch. She's selling out meet and greets. She has great promos. She's got a great Twitter game. She has great matches. Wait, she has great matches. I even heard someone say that she has as many great matches or more great matches than Charlotte Flair, which is a goddamn lie. In my heated opinion, Becky Lynch has never had a great match in the WWE without Charlotte Flair or Sasha Banks in that ring with her. Take a look at it. Take a look at her entire career from NXT to now. What are the great matches that Becky Lynch has been in? Takeover Revival back in February of 2015, Fatal 4-Way with the Four Horsewomen. Great match. Becky versus Sasha at TakeOver Unstoppable. Considered Becky's breakout match. Definitely was her breakout match. Classic, one of the greatest women's matches in WWE history. Great match. Mm -hmm. Becky versus Sasha versus Charlotte. The triple threat match at WrestleMania 32. Fantastic match. Becky versus Charlotte at Evolution. Probably in my eyes and a lot of others. The greatest women's matchup in WWE history. And, th and at TLC most recently in December of 2018. She had another classic with Asuka and Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair about Sasha Banks. Yeah, all her matches have been with Charlotte Flair and Sasha Banks in it. She's never had a great match. She's been in the ring with Natalya. She's been in the ring with Alexa Bliss. She's been in the ring with solid good performers and characters. She's been in the ring with stars like the Bella Twins. She, she hasn't done it. Ronda Rousey was able to have a memorable match and a memorable feud with Nikki Bella. Can anyone remember any match that Becky Lynch had with Nikki or Brie Bella back in 2015 when she was versing them every week? No, you can't, because she didn't have a memorable match. She didn't have a great match. She didn't even have a good match. Okay, so your heated opinion sounds like a lot of hate. How am I hating? I'm speaking like, the truth. It sounds like a lot of hate, and, 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 it's, and I understand why you're hating, and it's, and it's, okay, you got some valid points that Becky has not had the greatest of matches throughout the span of her career, but this has been the year of Becky. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't but say anything about it. It's been the year of Becky, and the fact that she has become slightly more popular than our lovely and awesome Ronda Rousey, it's like our Lord and Savior. Our your Lord and Savior. It's itching your little nerves that somebody has become just as big, if not a little bit bigger this year, than Ronda Rousey. Sir, if you haven't realized by now, I'm the man that created a whole anthem for Roman Reigns. I don't give a fuck if no, these it, people it, it, don't it, it, like somebody. It, it was, our Lord is, they can hate our Lord and Savior. Cool. I know they hate our Lord and Savior. Right, Guess right, what? Right. I enjoy that shit. That was co that was co-produced, by the way. Co-produced. Okay. Right. You 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 credit stealer. Alright. That was co-produced. Alright. Um, well, but you, 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 way, you just committed blasphemy. You said her name without calling her our Lord and Savior first. Because I got to make sure it hits home before it feels like, oh, I'm buttering up to her. No, no. Why are we buttering up to her? I don't got to butter up to her on this version of the heated opinion. Because You're buttering up to Becky. I'm I'm giving props to where it's no, due. You're jumping on the Becky bandwagon. Uh, you're just like the rest of these marks. Jumping on the Becky bandwagon. Oh, I wasn't here for TakeOver Unstoppable, but I'll jump on 2018. People <laughs> are telling me she's the best woman's wrestler of 2018? How? She's had a great five months. That's she five out of 12. Had... That's not even 50%. Again, so this again, this sounds like pure hate. No. Because all you're doing is honest. hating on the people that is enjoying what they're getting from Becky. Becky Lynch. I'm just being like, honest. no, you're shutting people down because you're in you're you're disagreeing with the fact that she has become the man in a short span of time. That her becoming the woman's champion and her badass attitude, she taking full advantage of becoming a heel and actually stealing that brass thunder and actually making something of it, and you're gonna hate on her for that? That's pathetic. Becky That's Lynch. pretty pathetic. Wait, the only thing that you just said that stood out to me, Becky, when was Becky Lynch a heel? 
Dude, when she tur- obviously she turned heel at SummerSlam. She turned super face. No, she, she tur- got cheered. She, became- she never generated any heat. She, that the goal was for her to become heel. Because and she botched she, it. She, she wasn't good at it. No, she became too good at it that she got loved. It had the backward effect at the same effect that it had on Kevin Owens because he was and so pe- good at and it. And people say he's a bad heel. Be- no, Kevin Owens is obviously, we missed the hell out of Kevin Owens, but Kevin I miss Owens, him. And he Kevin needs to be Owens a face. was so good at his role, people loved him for that. And it's the same thing that's happening to Becky Lynch, but you are sitting here, you want to put this blasphemy ass hate on her because she is actually getting just as many mentions I, as Ronda Rousey. I said actual I said and actual she facts. Put your girl in an arm bar and laid her out before from behind. Survivor Series. From behind. How we knew how we from knew from behind when she from was behind. in the arm Because Ronda said, You oh, caught me with Ronda my hands down. Said, you caught me with my said, hands well, down. Mommy said she attacked me from behind. Mommy said. How do we know this? Was the okay. camera on okay. there okay. when okay. Ronda was in the disarm her? So you said I'm hating. But you're not hating on Seth Rollins. Even though you just said Seth Rollins can't hold down a brand, but he was WWE champion for about seven months in 2004, in 2015. Uh, sir, that's cool. He held down a brand. Sir. He held down, he held down both shows. Sir. So what the hell are you talking about? That's called my opinion. That's a, that's a wrong opinion. So, d- d- that's called my opinion. I spent, I spent, and I I'm pretty sure. facts in my heated opinion. You spent no, fiction no, 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 no. and try to create facts. No, you're trying to get people to go the wrong way on your bullshit opinion because you're hating on Becky okay, name a and match, bottom line. Name a great match that didn't have Sasha I Charlotte. don't care about that because we're talking about the year of Becky, not the career of Becky. I, I wasn't talking about the year of Becky. I was talking about her career. Well, you're talking That was my heated opinion. Your that was my... That was why my do you take her opinion. Why do you take her hottest moment, you asshole? You take her hottest moment and you want to bloviate her career. So, Seth Rollins had his best year since 2015, you're a jerk, and you're You're a jerk, bottom line. You want to see this hate come down on from other people. You want people to jump on your little holiday bandwagon and get off the man's bandwagon because you feel a certain kind of way because she's taking thunder from your girl. And you're jumping on the coattails of everybody else hating on Seth Rollins. So what's the difference? Everyone else hating Seth Rollins? Yes, everybody's jumping on his bandwagon. Oh, Seth Rollins had a bad match. Oh, he, this, is, this is boring. Maybe he's not the true face. Maybe he shouldn't verse Brock Lesnar. Shut up. He's already, uh, he's already been the face of the company three years ago. What the hell are y'all talking about? He's uh, been on top a lot longer than the you, five months Becky has. Are you mad? No. Are you mad? No, you I'm, speaking, mad. I'm speaking facts. You sound mad. I spit facts again. You sound really I mad right now. So when you raise your voice, you're not mad. When I raise my voice, I'm mad. I get it. I get it. I gotta speak. I have to speak anyway. Over you. All right. I have to speak over you because obviously your holiday hat is blocking your hearing. No, it's not. I hear you very well because you speak out of very loud octave. Anyway. <laughs> This has been True Hill Heat. Heated opinions. You heard from top guy JJ. He believes that Seth Rollins is not good enough to, to be the man nope. on his own brand. And me, myself, I speak the facts that was Becky Lynch has never had a great match in her WWE career without Charlotte or Sasha Banks. Post your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next True Hill Heat.